Your Excellencies, Lady. from Barbados. Whoa! Cool. And welcome to the people of Barbados. Daremos las boas vindas. Welcome. Welcome. Nos gustaría dar la bienvenida. The people of Belize. Bolivia. And Brazil. I just learned that Canada's lowest record temperature is as cold as Mars. And you know what else? Chile has the world's biggest swimming pool. Isso é muito divertido. Fun! Wow. I'd like to welcome the people of Chile. Canada! Cuba! Welcome to the people of Colombia. Le damos la bienvenida a la gente de Costa Rica. And, and guess, guess what? Do you know which country in the Americas has nine active volcanoes? Which one? Dominica! Welcome to the people of Dominica. Did you know that the summit of Mount Chimborazo, Ecuador's highest mountain, is the closest you could get to space with your feet still on the ground? Welcome to the people of Ecuador. Welcome to the people of the Dominican Republic. I'm Andy. And I'm Valentina. And, and we'd, we'd like, like to, to welcome, welcome the people, the people of, of El Salvador, of Grenada, and Guyana. I'm proud to tell you that Guatemala is often called the birthplace of chocolate. Yummy. Welcome to the people of Guatemala. To the people of Haiti and Honduras. Here's something interesting. Reggae music icon Bob Marley was from Jamaica. Mexico is home to the world's largest pyramid. Incredible! I'm welcoming the people of Jamaica. People of Mexico. Vamos, Mexico! 
Welcome to the people of Nicaragua. Panama, Paraguay! Can you believe that Panama is the only country in the world where you can watch the sun rise on the Pacific coast and then set on the Atlantic coast? I love that you can swim in the Amazon with the pink dolphins in Peru. And that St. Lucia was the first country to be named after a woman. Welcome. The people of Peru. St. Lucia. And St. Kitts and Nevis. Welcome. I'd like to welcome the people of St. Vincent and Grenadines. La gente de Suriname y Trinidad y Tobago. I've got one more amazing stat. There are over 80 million dogs in the United States. Did you know that Uruguay was the first country in South America to ever host a Football World Cup? Welcome the people of the United States, Uruguay, and Venezuela. Welcome. 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 Welcome to the 2022 Summit of the Americas in, in Los, Los Angeles. Angeles. On behalf of all the children of Los Angeles, we welcome the leaders of the Americas to the City of Angels. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome. Thank you to our children, and thank you for reminding us. Please, take your seats. Reminding us why we are gathered here today in the City of Angels for the ninth Summit of the Americas to put our collective heads and our hearts to work in forging a vision and a plan for a world that we want to share, not just in our hemisphere or our countries or our cities, but for these angels, our children. Estos ángeles, nuestros niños. I'm Mayor Eric Garcetti, and I am so honored to say welcome, bienvenidos, bienvenu, bienvindo to my hometown. El Pueblo de Nuestra Señora, La Reina de Los Ángeles de Porciúncula, or as we just call it, L.A. A city of belonging built by dreamers and doers from every corner of the hemisphere. Una ciudad donde todos pertenecen, creada por gente con sueños y poblaciones de cada esquina de este hemisferio. A city of the future, where we meet challenges with creativity and with cooperation. Una ciudad del futuro, donde enfrentamos cualquier reto de cre con creatividad y con cooperación. And although we all have lived through these past few years, some of the most difficult years we've ever lived with, with the toughest challenges any of us have ever faced, this is our time to come together. Esta es nuestra oportunidad de unirnos, to listen, to learn, to emerge stronger, smarter, and more unified than ever, leading with strength and, yes, with love. This is what we are called to do urgently for ourselves and for our neighbors, for our nations, and for our planet. It is now my great joy to introduce my dear friend and the leader of our Golden State, Governor Gavin Newsom. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I love, what, uh, I love what Mayor Garcetti talked about, dreamers and doers. I love to say that about not just LA, but California. A state of dreamers, doers, entrepreneurs, innovators, a state like our nation that prides itself on being on the leading and cutting edge of new ideas. You are in one of the most diverse cities, LA, in the most diverse region, in the most diverse state, California, in the world's most diverse democracy. And we're proud of that. We, we don't tolerate our diversity, we celebrate our diversity. That's our strength. We're a universal state. <laughs> and so, you know, I couldn't imagine a better place for all of you to be. Here's a word you don't hear a, a lot, particularly in America, and that's pluralism. California plaque practices pluralism. And I sit here very proud, Kiara reminding me all these young kids, I sit here as governor of California where 27% of us are foreign born, but over 50%, half our children, have one or more parents that are foreign born. It just doesn't exist anywhere else but here in the state of California. That is a deep point of pride. And by the way, it is a point of pride for me 
to introduce to you someone who is the manifestation of the best of California values and the best of American values, our very own, the Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris. I know our future is bright when I look at these young leaders. Governor Gavin Newsom, thank you for that introduction. It is, of course, so good to be back in my home state of California. And to everyone here, on behalf of our administration, it is my honor to officially welcome you to the ninth Summit of the Americas. And of course, we are here together with world leaders, local elected officials, including our host city mayor, Garcetti, business and civil society leaders, and of course, the President of the United States, Joe Biden. As many of you may know, I am a proud daughter of California. I represented this state as Attorney General and as a United States Senator, and I am proud to call Los Angeles my home. As Vice President, I am pleased to acknowledge, as the Governor mentioned, California is a place where ambitions and dreams become reality. And so we all gather in Los Angeles this week for the Summit of the Americas with big ambitions. Ambitions that began 28 years ago in Miami at the first ever Summit of the Americas, when our nations together set the Western Hemisphere on a new path, a path to grow our economies and improve the lives of our people. And together, we have made progress on this path a path that I believe is critically important for so many of us, and I will speak important for the American people, because the Western Hemisphere directly affects the security and prosperity of the United States. And so, this week, we gather once more to build a more prosperous and inclusive future. I look out at this room, and I see representatives of so many different countries and communities. We are joined, of course, by heads of state, and we are joined by youth leaders. We are joined by CEOs, and we are joined by labor organizers, women entrepreneurs, activists, and advocates. So here's how I see it. To realize a more prosperous future for our hemisphere, partnerships between those assembled here are essential. It is in this spirit that I have focused on bringing companies and organizations together to collaborate and coordinate and share lessons learned, and to galvanize billions of dollars in new investments. The challenges facing our hemisphere in the months and years ahead are significant. The climate crisis, food insecurity, economic inequality, corruption, and gender-based violence. 
When I think about these challenges, I know and I am certain they will require new and innovative coalitions to solve, which is why President Joe Biden and I see this week as an opportunity for all of us, an opportunity to launch new initiatives, to begin new conversations, and to build new partnerships. So let us enjoy this evening and also commit ourselves to taking advantage of this time that we spend together under the same roof. At this convening, let us build a more prosperous and inclusive future for the entire Western Hemisphere. Thank you and welcome. Angeles, the city of angels. Nearly 4 million people live here. Nearly 50 million people visit here every year. Men and women, people young and old, people of every race and ethnicity come together right here. And that's why this year, the Summit of the Americas is being hosted in Los Angeles. Because we know that diversity is our strength and unity makes progress possible. At Los Angeles museums and concert halls, art and music challenge us to transcend boundaries. On its shoreline, the ocean waters connect us all. And at the world-famous Griffith Observatory, we are reminded that we are part of something much, much bigger. Los Angeles proves that when people play together, or work together, learn together, or dream together, Anything is possible. Los Angeles proves that in the face of disaster and distress, the solution is not just on us, it is us. So as we come together for this historic summit, let us remember the visionaries who dreamt up this city, the workers who built it up, and the millions of Angelinos who keep this city going today and every day. In the City of Angels, you need not look up to the heavens to find hope. Just look around you. The Summit of the Americas, welcome to Los Angeles.
What a shame, there's so much pain So many things will turn my chain The world has always fallen one away Why I would try and spin her all And let's bring love and hope to cure the pain We can learn from our mistakes Why don't we Bolivia is home to over 30 official languages. Believe it or not, Brazil has the most animal and plant species than any other country in the whole world. It has also been the largest producer of coffee for the last 150 years. The Amazon River starts in Peru. Kaipur Falls in Guyana is the world's largest single drop waterfall of 741 feet. Angel Falls, the world's highest waterfall, with a height of 979 meters and a plunge of 807 meters. And also did you know that Paraguay's people make the finest lace in the world, called Nyandu Ti, which translates to spider web. Uruguay has the longest national anthem in the world. It takes six minutes to perform. Colombia has a naturally occurring rainbow river. Please welcome the President of the Republic of Peru, Pedro Castillo. Mr. President of the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, heads of state and government, secretary generals of the United Nations and of the Organization of American States, special guests, members of delegations, ladies and gentlemen, Peru hosted the eighth summit of the Americas in 2018. We welcomed in Lima 
the heads of state and government of the countries of the Americas. We did so because we believe this mechanism as a valuable space for joint action. It should constantly be strengthened and promoted. Since the first summit also held in the United States in Miami in 1994, we have been invited to dialogue on different common concerns. We have developed a shared vision for the future development of our region. We also have an opportunity of sharing important achievements. I'm specifically talking about the establishment of the CEO Summit Dialogue, which has been facilitated by the Inter-American Development Bank, the Inter-American Democratic Charter, mandated by the Quebec Summit in 2001 and approved in Lima that same year, also promotes us to further put into action the Inter-American Convention Against Corruption and the Inter-American Convention Against Terrorism, among others. I would particularly like to refer to the Lima Commitment. This was adopted in said summit in Peru. We picked as a central issue one of the most widespread problems and harmful problems in the world and in the hemisphere. I'm specifically talking about corruption. In its text, we have 57 actions. Since then, they have guided the efforts of our countries to combat and eradicate, discourage, and strengthen democratic gover governance and the protection of human rights. Back then in Lima, the countries of the Americas established the need to go beyond the adoption of the agreements. We recognized the importance of giving continuity to the commitments made to that end. In this sense, we set up a follow-up mechanism. This mechanism allows states, civil society organizations, and in general, citizens of the continent to verify compliance of each and every commitment and to know the degree of progress in the implementation of public policies against corruption. This mechanism is part of the common heritage of the Americas. It is a valuable management tool to move from the words to actions. Four years after those meetings, we are now facing renewed challenges. These challenges have come about as a result of unprecedented and extremely difficult situations that have been caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and the international situation. We therefore welcome with great satisfaction that many of these concerns have been reflected in the topics rightly proposed by the United States as host country. We seek to build on what has already been achieved. This is a healthy practice that we must continue. We also wish to outline initiatives to alleviate the multidimensional crisis we have been going through. This crisis is hitting the most disadvantaged sectors of our population in the most dramatic manner. I would like to conclude by expressing my pleasure and my gratitude for the generous hospitality of the government and peoples of the United States, and especially to this magnificent city of Los Angeles. Today, you are welcoming us. I hope that the success of this ninth summit of the Americas will be a significant achievement of our continent, and Peru will contribute decisively to reach that goal. America for the Americans. Thank you very much. In 1994, our hemisphere came together in Miami 
For the first time in history, our leaders set forth a plan of action to strengthen democracy, to promote economic prosperity, to eradicate poverty and discrimination, and to guarantee sustainable development. In the 28 years since, we have built on that progress. Enemies have made peace. Partners have worked together to drive shared economic growth. And when disaster struck, the region provided much needed relief. The nations of the Americas have joined forces to fight crime and corruption, to combat climate change, and to curb the COVID-19 pandemic. Through it all, it's as important as ever for us to support democracy, as well as the sovereignty of nations, the integrity of elections, and the rights of all people. So for the sake of all those in our country and our region who call ourselves Americans, let's take up together the work of building the hemisphere where every child in every country grows up with opportunity, security, and freedom. Today, 28 years after the first summit, nations have come together again. This time in another city that celebrates its diversity, Los Angeles. The challenges that the region and the world now face are as great as they have ever been, as economies are being rebuilt, as health systems and our environment are being tested. The critical work continues at this year's summit. A place for solutions. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Good evening. Please be seated. Welcome to Los Angeles. And I probably should stop right here, because I've followed some difficult acts in the past. <laughs> I followed some difficult acts, but never before have I followed such a difficult act as I've seen the last 45 minutes up here. It's my honor to host my fellow leaders from throughout the, our hemisphere for the Ninth Summit of the Americas, at a moment when we need more cooperation, common purpose, and transformative ideas that have never been a greater need than today. I also want to welcome all the representatives from civil society, the private sector, international institutions, and especially young people from across the Americas who are participating in this summit. <laughs> Democracy is a hallmark of our region. Our Inter-American Democratic Charter, which grew out of the third summit of the Americas, captures our unique commitment to democracy as a region. It affirms the right of people throughout the Americas to democracy and our obligation as governments to promote and defend democracy. As we meet again today, in a moment when democracy is under assault around the world, let us unite again and renew our conviction that democracy is not only the defining feature of American histories, but the essential ingredient to America's futures. Folks, to state the obvious, our region is large and diverse. We don't always agree on everything, but because we're democracies, we work through our disagreements with mutual respect and dialogue. At this summit, we have an opportunity for us to come together around some bold ideas, ambitious actions, and to demonstrate to our people the incredible power of democracies to deliver concrete benefits and make life better for everyone, everyone. 
And no longer is this a question of what will we do, what will the United States do for the Americas. The question is what we can accomplish by working together as true partners with diverse capabilities but equal and mutual respect, recognizing both our individual sovereignty and our shared responsibilities. The COVID-19 pandemic hit our region particularly hard. While we account for just 12 percent of the global population, we experienced more than 40 percent of reported global pandemic-related deaths. It's an enormous tragedy that has left too many families grief-stricken. An ensuing economic crisis triggered by the pandemic ravaged economies throughout the hemisphere, wiping out much of the hard-earned progress we had made. 22 million more people fell into poverty in just the first year of the pandemic. Inequity continues to rise. Global inflammatory pressures were made worse by Putin's brutal and unprovoked war against Ukraine and making it harder for families to make ends meet. And all of these factors are contributing to vastly increased migration flows throughout our hemisphere, with too many people feeling there is no option available to them to provide for themselves and their families. These challenges affect all of us. All of our nations have a responsibility to step up and ease the pressure people are feeling today. In the months leading up to this summit, countries have made meaningful and concrete commitments to address these challenges. And the United States is attempting to do our part as well. Yesterday, we launched our Cities Forward initiative, recognizing the key roles of mayors and local governments, the role they play in delivering for the people where they live. And we'll host the inaugural City Summoning of the Americas in Denver in 2023. Earlier today, we announced a new America Health Corps with 50,000 public health and medical professionals being trained in the region over the next five years to help strengthen our health systems throughout the hemisphere. In the next few days, we'll be rolling out another new initiative created in cooperation with many of your countries. It includes the U.S. Caribbean partnership to address the climate crisis, which the Vice President Harris will lead for our country. And the collaboration among the United States, the United States, Argentina, Brazil, Canada, Chile, and Mexico, the hemisphere's largest exporters of food to increase food production for export, as well as increase fertilizer production for transportation. transportation. Our leaders, all of us, as we discuss ways to better target more than a half a billion dollars of the United States is devoting to increasing security for our citizens, working with partners to disrupt transnational criminal organizations, go after drug traffickers and illicit firearms, advancing anti-corruption efforts, and strengthening the rule of law. And tonight, I'm announcing a new economic partnership that builds on all the work we have done with the region and will guide our engagement going forward. We're calling it America's Partnership for Economic Prosperity. And it's grounded on the same core values that my administration is bringing to our own strong economic recovery and to bolster long-term economic competitiveness in the United States. First, the American Partnership will help economies grow from the bottom up and the middle out not the top down. What's true, what's true in the United States is true in every country. Trickle-down economics does not work. But when we invest in strengthening workers and the middle class, the poor have a ladder up, and those at the top do just fine. That's how we can increase opportunity and decrease persistent inequity. We need to break the cycle where marginalized communities are hit the hardest by disasters and have the fewest resources to recover from crises and prepare for the next one. Together, we have to invest in making sure our trade is sustainable and responsible in creating supply chains 
that are more resilient, more secure, and more sustainable. By working with close friends who share our values, we can make sure that we are not left vulnerable to unexpected shocks while generating economic opportunity for the people in our region. Second, America's partnership will foster innovation and help governments deliver for their own people. People everywhere expect their government to help give them just a little bit of breathing room, provide opportunities for work that pays a decent wage, educate children so they can rise as high as their talents can take them, make communities more secure so families feel safe in their homes and individuals know their rights will be respected. That means directing investment to help governments deliver on those responsibilities, including modernized, modernizing multilateral development banks to better address the challenges of today and of the future. For example, many countries in our region have prospered, prospered, prospered overall, making it harder for them to secure development lending but they struggle with deep inequity. I'm proposing the fundamental reforms of the Inter-American Inter Development Bank Group, and the United States is ready to put our new capital in the bank's private sector lending arm, the IDB investment, to help capitalize on the critical flow of private capital in the region, especially to those startup digital connectivity, renewable energy, and health. Third, the American partnership will tackle the climate crisis head-on with the same mentality we're bringing to the work in the United States. When I hear climate, I think jobs. Good-paying, high-quality jobs will help speed our transition to a green economy of the future and unleash sustainable growth. Jobs in developing and deploying clean energy jobs in decarbonizing the economy, jobs in protecting biodiversity of our hemisphere, jobs provide dignity of being able to feed your family, give your children a better life, and envision a future of possibilities. That's what this is all about, responding to basic human desires that we share for dignity, for safety, and for security. And when those basics are absent, in one place, that's when people make the desperate decision to seek them as elsewhere. So on Friday, we'll also come together to, law, to launch the Los Angeles Declaration, a groundbreaking integrated new approach to managing migration and sharing responsibility across the hemisphere. The Declaration represents a mutual commitment to invest in regional solutions that enhance stability, increase opportunities for safe and orderly migration through the region, and crack down on criminal and human trafficking who prey on desperate people. <laughs> safe and orderly migration is good for all of our economies, including the United States. It can be a catalyst for sustainable growth. But all unlawful migration is not acceptable we will enforce our borders, including through innovative, coordinated action with our regional partners. We've come a long way together since the United States hosted the first summit of the Americas 28 years ago. But the spirit of Miami, as it was known, the sense of hope and new possibilities that define that first summit remains key to facing the challenge of today and unlocking the incredible potential that exists in this hemisphere in the Americas. There is no reason why the Western Hemisphere shouldn't be secure, prosperous, and democratic, from Canada's northernmost reaches to the southern tips of Chile. We have all the tools we need right here in our own hemisphere. Our people are dynamic and innovative. Our nations are committed to working in partnership. And our region is forever knit together by the close bonds of family and enduring friendship. We see it here in Los Angeles, as you heard earlier, a city that has been shaped from its earliest days and strengthened over the decades by the rich and diverse con contributions from people of all our nations. It's written in the murals, the markets, the thoroughfares, 
that crisscrossed the city, bearing witness to the history, struggle, and indomitable spirit of the people of the Americas. This city is testament to the connections that bind us and our capacity to achieve great things together. So tonight, let's enjoy a wonderful celebration. Let us leave here renewed with purpose and a renewed partnership. And tomorrow, let's get to work building the future this region deserves. Thank you all, and again, welcome, welcome, welcome. first underwater sculpture park, featuring 26 kids holding hands, a newspaper man, a bicyclist, and much more. There are more than 225 species of fish that live in the waters of St. Vincent and Grenadines. That's a whole lot of fish! Yup! Jamaica actually sits on top of a large underwater mountain and is the first Caribbean country to launch a website. And the grapefruit originated in Barbados. And now, please welcome famed Colombian musician Jorge Celedon performing his song, Esta Vida. Hey, hey. De Colombia para el mundo. Ay, 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 ay. Vamos. Me gusta el olor que tiene la mañana. Me gusta el primer traguito de café. Sentir como el sol se asoma a mi ventana y me llena la mirada de un hermoso amanecer. Me gusta escuchar la paz de las montañas, mirar los colores del atardecer, sentir en mis pies la arena de la playa y lo dulce de la calle cuando beso a mi mujer. Sé, sé que el tiempo lleva prisa para borrarme de la lista, pero yo le digo que Siempre hay alguien que nos quiere, siempre hay alguien que nos cuida. Ay, 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 qué bonita es esta vida. Y aunque no se apaga siempre, si la vivo con ustedes, es bonita hasta la muerte con aguardiente y tequila. de otro hermoso amanecer sé sé que el tiempo lleva prisa para borrarme de la lista pero yo le digo que ay qué bonita es esta vida aunque a veces duela tanto y a pesar de los pesares siempre hay alguien que nos quiere siempre hay alguien que nos cuida Y a pesar de no pesar, 
siempre si la vivo con mi gente que bonita está la muerte con aguardiente y tequila ay 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 por la paz del mundo
Canada has the world's longest coastline. In Mexico, se hablan 69 lenguas diferentes. Mexico is home to the largest fleet of taxi cabs in the world. And the United States has all of Earth's five climate zones. Tropical, dry, temperate, continental, and polar. And now, here to perform his hit song, El Rey, acclaimed Mexican singer Alex Fernandez, joined by the Mariachi Divas Espectacular. me muera, sé que tendrás que llorar. Llorar y llorar, llorar y llorar. Dirás que no me quisiste, pero vas a estar muy triste y así te vas a quedar. Con dinero y sin dinero hago siempre lo que quiero. Palabra es la ley. No tengo trono ni reina, ni nadie quien me comprenda, pero sigo siendo el rey. El mariachi. A ver si es cierto. Or not tanto. <laughs> Me enseñó que mi destino era rodar y rodar. Rodar y rodar, rodar y rodar. Después me dijo un arriero que no hay que llegar primero, pero hay que saber llegar. Dinero y sin dinero hago siempre lo que quiero y mi palabra es la ley. No tengo trono ni reina ni nadie quien me comprenda, pero sigo siendo el Thank you. Four different species of sea turtles inhabit the coast of El Salvador. Costa Rica is known for its national park. There are 28. Guatemala is actually a leader in the production of blue denim. Jeans? Yes! The national bird of Panama is the harpy eagle. And finally, Nicaragua is the largest country in Central America. Please welcome the founding director and convener of the CEDAW Committee of Trinidad and Tobago, Terry Ince. Good evening, Mr. President, world leaders, your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. It is such a pleasure to share this moment with you this evening. My name is Terry Ince. I am the proud to be here representing civil society organizations from across the Americas and Trinidad and Tobago. Civil society is the third sector of society, distinct from government and business, and made up of groups working in the interest of citizens, but organizing outside of government. 
We are ordinary people making extraordinary contributions. We are key to avenues to the realization of national, social, and environmental promises and priorities. The CEDAW Committee of Trinidad and Tobago is located or focused on the sustainable development of women and girls grounded in the principles of non-discrimination, substantive equality, and state accountability. We work with all stakeholders to ensure women and girls' development, empowerment, and leadership. Signatories to the Convention for the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women believe it is imperative of all of our governments to leverage mechanisms already in place to address ongoing issues of inequality and underrepresentation of women. I am proud to have collaborated with government to improve laws that affect women and development and girls and women such as the 20, 2017 Marriage Act, which regularized the age of consent to marry at 18 years and effectively eliminated <laughs> effectively em eliminated early marriages, which disproportionately impacts the lives of girls. Today, 74 years since the Universal Declaration of Human Rights was adopted at the United Nations, we remain resolute in our demands for two R's, resources, which are required to ensure women's rights are secured through advoc advocacy, programs, and policies, and respect. Respect for us and in all of our diversities and our contributions toward building a more equitable and balanced society. For more than a year, I and women across the hemisphere have engaged in national and regional consultations in preparation for this historic summit of the Americas. We are here. We're here representing civil society, women's organizations to engage, to contribute, to negotiate, to learn, to encourage, and to encourage governments to recognize the legal and binding obligations and treaties and other agreements to leverage gender responsive recovery approach to rebuilding, which includes meaningful engagements to, by civil and women's organizations, to close outstanding wage gaps and address existing stru structural barriers that continue to, in the formal sector, while addressing the informal sector, overwhelmingly filled by women who work without sa social safety mechanisms, such as health insurance or paid leave, rendering them vulnerable to any change in the economy. To emerge from this... <laughs> and to emerge from this ninth summit recommitting to the leadership and participation of women and the representation of women and the women's agenda currently underrepresented. We have achieved much in advancing women's leadership and, pro and promoting women's rights in recent years. But if nothing else, the COVID-19 pandemic has clearly demonstrated that there is still much work to be done. And in attaining the goals we have set through the commitments made, we can bring about more equitable societies that are better equipped to meet the challenges of the post-pandemic era. Adolescent girls and young women must see themselves as part of policies being developed and implemented. Nothing about us without us is a movement. We all need to pay attention.
We all need to pay attention and do our utmost to be inclusive and transformative. Every citizen of every one of our countries has a significant role to play in the development issues that must be addressed in the months and years ahead. Governmental agencies working with civil society with a, will be a focal point in the realization of more equitable societies. Today must see us striding forward positively on that journey together. Thank you. Before we go, we have one final performance. Please welcome the queen of percussion, a proud daughter of California, Sheila E.
Thank you for coming to the Summit of Americas. Good night.